What's up guys, Sam here. Welcome back to the Juice Box. In today's video, I have an inverter for you guys. A little bit of unboxing, showing, telling, testing, and vetting. This is the Ampeak 1200 watt pure sine wave inverter. Let's give it a look. This is the Ampeak 1200 watt pure sine wave inverter. This is a 12 volt inverter, so we'll only work with 12 volt battery systems. This particular model has an AC output voltage of 105 to 125 volts, so standard voltage for here in the US, and as advertised and said before, is a pure sine wave inverter, which means it puts out clean, energy for all your sensitive electronic devices. This inverter does also have a 2400 watt surge if you want to try and test the limits or you have any kind of electronic motors that need an extra bit of oomph to start up. But as you'll see later in this video, we overload this guy when we try and put 1500 watts on it continuous, but it has some cool safety features that you will see in this video as well. So stick around. As far as outlet ports, this inverter has three standard US receptacles. Combined, you are looking at only being able to pull out 1200 watts, which is right around 10 amps of electricity. You are also going to see two USB ports down at the bottom. They are USB-A ports rated for 5 volts, 2.4 amps a piece. And then the little phone jack data port connection you see is for the remote inverter switch, which we are also going to cover in today's video. That's where it plugs in. Taking an overall look at the inverter, it is basic, it is fine, it is no frills, and it looks pretty nice. Everything you see that is orange is metal, so it has a nice metal wrap around it to give it protection, but also act as a heat sink. This inverter also has an active fan cooling system inside that does not run all the time, only as needed, so that is nice as well. And the battery connections are nice and solid, and the wires you get for connecting up to your battery are of sufficient size for the 1200 watt ratings. Very good. Let's go ahead and connect our cables to the inverter. They give you two cables. They both have connections on the ends, little bolts and washer setups, which is nice. And the side that connects to the inverter have these silicone boots that go on as well. Pretty cool. The kit also includes a 10 millimeter wrench, but you will need a Phillips screwdriver to help tighten down the connections with the wires. Moving over to the battery, we're going to connect up the positive side first. And the bolts and washers that came with the AMP converter don't fit with my battery style. So I'm just using the bolts that came with it, but perhaps they'll work for you. Either way, it is a great thought and a great addition that most manufacturers don't even include. With the positive wire connected, now I'm going to connect the negative, but first, I will use this 25 watt 30 ohm resistor to touch to the battery and then the negative wire to charge the capacitor slowly in the inverter. This little guy is cheap insurance and a general preventive measure to prevent you from sparking when you connect your wires and possibly shorting out the electronics in your inverter. It is very much worthwhile. You have to buy this separate, it doesn't come with any of these products, but it is worth its weight in gold. So I'll touch the resistor to the battery and then I'll touch it to the wire. Generally, I hold it for about 10 seconds or so. There's no set science method to it, I don't believe, but usually 10 seconds is long enough to slowly charge the capacitors inside and make sure everyone gets woken up slowly from their slumber. When that is done, connect the wire to it using the bolt that came with my battery, and I'll lock it down tight. With the battery connected, we can now power on the inverter for the first time. Hopefully everything works, but now is the moment of truth. Nice, fan ramped up for just a little bit, stopped because it didn't need to continue running for temperature reasons. And now my display is showing me my input voltage, 13.2 watts. Temperature inside is 55 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm output 120 volts, zero amps at 60 Hertz. 
and currently consuming three watts. So if I'm reading the display correctly, three watts is the idle consumption rate of this inverter. That's not too bad. To test out the inverter, I'm bringing over my black box of abuse for slice toaster. Go ahead and plug it up to the inverter here. Make sure our timers are cranked all the way. And the first thing I want to do is turn on one side, watch the readout, see if it displays correctly. I'm hoping for somewhere around 730 watts to 750 watts per side. So adding that to the three watt draw we have shown already, we'll, have, we'll just do some math and figure it out. If that looks good, then I'll turn on the other side and we're going to overload this inverter to test its safety measures and see what happens. All right, I have the inverter propped up for you guys and we're going to go ahead and put it to the toast test. Turn on this side. Our display is showing right at around 730 watts. That is correct, it's what I would expect. And now what I'm going to do is intentionally overload the inverter. It is only rated at 1200 watts. This toaster will pull 1400 to 1500 watts. So when I turn on this other side, it's going to be an immediate overload. Let's watch this to see what happens. So the inverter briefly flashed 1400 plus or minus watts, the fan kicked on, and then it shut everything off sounding the alarm saying we've, well, exceeded our speed limit here with the inverter. The other thing to note is that the display reset itself and I think it did a self reset. It didn't make me manually turn the power switch off and on down there. Let me put that to the test by using the toaster again to see if it supplies power. Awesome, it is. That right there is an amazing feature. If this inverter is mounted somewhere that is not easily accessible and you happen to overload it, having that self reset is a huge convenience factor. The next thing I want to test is the charger for my Blue Eddy power station that I have in here. The reason I want to test with this is not to see if it can power it, I know it will, but this one is a great indicator of clean versus dirty power. When I used the DeWalt inverter in a previous video, this guy buzzed, made the noise, and was not sounding that happy. When I put it back onto grid power, it is silent, with the exception of the fan that runs. So let's go ahead and plug this guy into the AMP converter and hear if we have clean power coming out of this inverter. Awesome. This guy was happy, sounded normal, which means this is putting out a true pure sine wave. Very, very nice. Up next on our test list is the USB ports on the front. You have two 2.4 amp USB-A connectors. To test this out, I'm using a Klein Tools ET920 USB digital multimeter. We'll choose the cord that corresponds to the port, push it in to connect. And then if we look really closely, it's going to be hard to see on camera, the multimeter tells me I'm bringing in 5.18 volts, 0 amps, and it looks correct. Nice and stable. We'll do the same test to the top port. And it is the exact same way, 5.21 volts. So good job, Ampeak. Those test out as well. An optional accessory you can purchase is this Ampeak remote switch to control your inverter, turn it off and on from a remote location. This guy would be phenomenally useful if you have an RV or a van or your inverter is not placed right at the front door in a structure. This lets you power things on and off remotely with a switch. So let's go ahead and plug this guy into its data communication port on the inverter. It's located down here, right next to your USB ports. On the switch plate, we have a green LED indicator that tells me the inverter is on. To turn it off, we'll push this button once. The LED on this turns off. And looking at the display screen on the inverter, it has now changed to zero watts and should turn off here in just a few seconds. Well guys, this is a bummer. So the switch appears like it works. When I press it, the light goes off, 
the meter on the screen goes down to zero watts and it sits there. Okay, when I click to press it on, the light lights up here. The meter says 31 watts, but nothing ever happens with power. My charger over there is not turned on. It is not putting power out to the inverter for some reason. I'll reach out to the company and see what they say about this. I'll put some text here on the screen if they send me a replacement switch and that fixes the issue or if this was just a no-go. I don't want to hold up this video production for you guys, but you will have the answer there on the text and you will have already seen it. So you know more than I do at this particular point in time. If you follow the juice box and you have seen my previous video about a DeWalt inverter, you may have the question, Sam, you have the DeWalt, now you have the Ampeak, which one are you going to keep? The DeWalt is not a pure sine wave inverter and the wires given to you from DeWalt in the package are not of sufficient gauge to properly handle the wattage that it's rated for. Yep, I wasted my money on the DeWalt, but that's okay. This Ampeak inverter checks out very well. Real time, I am disappointed in this switch that it doesn't work for me, but like I said earlier, there will have already been a text blurb saying if this is just faulty, the company sends me another one, they teach me how to use it properly, or if this is just something you don't want to waste your money on. I'll put that in this video. This guy aside, the inverter operates exactly as advertised. It has a nice robust build. I like the protective silicone boots for your wires to hook up to your battery. I like the fact they give you the hardware to hook to your battery if you need it. Well, I didn't use that personally. It goes over here to the juice box boxes, I guess, and it'll get used for other projects. And it's just an additional bit of, wow, that's nice that they include in the box. Hands down, I love the fact that when you overload this inverter, it does have its safety measures that kick in immediately. It alarms to let you know, but after a few little seconds there of freaking out, self resets and lets you get back rocking and rolling with your power. That is phenomenal. This kind of inverter, being 12 volts, 1200 watt output max, is perfect for smaller setups. Something that I have right now in the juice box. Single solar panel, one 12 volt battery. This is perfect for me. Same thing if you are looking for a system for a van, an RV, a camper, maybe a storage shed, or just getting your toes wet in solar and off-grid power generation and usage, this guy will do the job. As always, there are links to this product and the tools that I've used in the video description down below. Feel free to check them out. If you have any questions or comments about this video or anything in general juice box related, definitely leave me a comment as well. I look forward to chatting with you guys down there. Otherwise, take care. I'll see you guys next time in the juice box.